Hey guys, it's Brian. Over the past 10 months, I've been learning how to sculpt characters in Blender. I've watched a whole lot of tutorials and did a bunch of sculpts over the weekends. I found that all the information needed to create a nice sculpt, it's out there. It's just that it seems like it's it's all in pieces, just little bits here and there from different videos that I want to use in my workflow. So I figured I'd save you the legwork and share how I make a character sculpt from start to finish. In this series, we'll be sculpting Princess Zelda. This is the concept art that I drew. We're not going to stick 100% to it, but it gives us a good idea of what we're going to kind of shoot for. If you'd like to follow along with the sculpt, I created a reference sheet to help you along with the block out. You can find it in the description below. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Alright, so before we start blocking out, let's set up a reference. Shift A, go to Image, Reference, and let's open up the reference sheet. And it's going to come in at a weird angle. If we hold down Alt and press R, it will reset the rotation transform and we will press numpad one to go into the front view. Now if we hit RX90, it's gonna rotate at 90 degrees on the X axis and bring our image up on the front view. Now with the image selected, let's go down here to the object data properties, hit opacity, and let's bring it down up here on the side. Let's hit front, that way when we're behind, we won't have to look at the image. And let's press G and Y to translate it back behind the image that way it won't be in the way so we want this to be at close to real world scale so let's say Zelda's around five foot five let's go over here and we're gonna change our cube height or Z height to 1.68 meters which is right around five foot five we'll bring it up to the bottom of the red line there and let's make it to where it's see-through and select our image move it over we can align right between these two eyeballs. We can align it right in the middle. And if we put her feet right down on the line, and then we'll change our pivot point to the 3D cursor. Now when we go to scale it, it'll scale down and keep that center line. And we just want our head to be right on top of the line of the cube. So we can get rid of the cube and we can copy this image here with shift D and right click to let go of it and then hit R Z 90 and that's going to put it on the left side. If we hit three, we're looking at the left one three. So let's move the side view forward G and then since we're looking at the side, that's going to be Y G Y and it's going to pull it over. Bring it around to the center here, right around there. That's fine. Now up here in the outliner, under this little funnel filter, let's click on the arrow, and that's gonna enable all these arrows here, and we can turn off the arrow on these so we don't accidentally click and move them. So we're all set up. Let's go in the front view, and shift A, go to mesh, and add a cube. And over here in the modifiers, we're gonna add a subdivision surface. And we're gonna go all the way up to three, and in edit mode, we'll scale it down. GZ to bring it up. Now let's zoom in, because this is gonna be our head. And let's scale it some more. And notice how it's it's pulling itself down. We didn't, we've gotta change our pivot point back to bounding box center. So let's scale it back down, GZ, to bring it back up. Now, it makes it easier to see if we turn it on wireframe but when it goes in a wireframe, we kind of lose the outline. So over here in the subdivision box, if we uncheck optimal display, it will show you all the potential geometry that happens after this modifier. Because before the modifier, you've only got the eight verts, and that's what it's showing you is the actual geometry. So if we uncheck this, it's gonna show us our potential geometry, what happens after the modifier. So back to one. Now we've got X-ray turned on so we can see through it. And if we click on the symmetry on X, we can move just one side of it and then move both sides of it. So we'll grab this corner and we'll kind of just try to match the shape of it. We'll hit three, go into the side view, pick both of the back ones, GY, let's bring this back and then get the front ones GY and bring this forward. Maybe bring this back one down a little bit more and that's good enough. Let's go back to object mode, back to the front view. Shift A, mesh, add another cube. Now instead of going over here and adding a modifier and then clicking this, 
we can have this selected and then if we hold down control and press one it's going to give us one subdivision or instead if we press control five it's going to give us five subdivisions but i usually always just go control three turn off optimal and then go ahead and go into wireframe go into edit mode scale it down gz scale it down some more scale it down some more bring it back up now let's add a loop cut in the middle and that'll give us a little bit more geometry to play with and on this bottom one we're going to scale it by x that way it pinches the bottom down we'll bring it down we'll grab the middle ones we'll bring it down we're going to scale them by x outwards and then this top one we'll scale it outwards too and bring it up gz so we're pretty well just trying to match the silhouette of the reference image go into the side view and then we'll just try to get this close we're not going to get the whole front end of her face exactly how it is you can bring this front one forward we'll bring these ones way up forward like this this could probably go all the way up here just keep moving the vertices around until we get the outline that we want now if we go to front view see what it looks like so that's pretty close that's good enough that's enough geometry for us to sculpt the face later let's go ahead and get the chest we'll add another cube Control 3 turn off optimal go into edit mode scale it down bring it up GZ we'll go back into x-ray add a loop cut in the middle and let's scale it down just a little bit more we'll select these and bring them up bring these up as well with X turned on select the middle one pull it to the right a little bit bring this one down bring this one back down and let's go to the side view grab these verts here GY bring it back bring this one forward bring these forward a little bit and this is going to take a little bit of tinkering with to make it fit inside and you can see where we have right here this curve we don't have enough geometry to make that curve so if we pull this up and we'll add a loop cut in between the lower third we can bring this one out we can bring this one in and we can get a whole lot closer okay add a new cube subdivide it scale it down and this is going to be her pelvis we'll put a loop cut in the middle of this one too and we've got just a little bit more geometry and we don't have to get these perfect because we'll be able to fix the rest of it when we get into sculpt mode let's go to the side view we're probably going to need one more loop cut but we'll wait on that to see when we need it let's bring these forward and we see this kind of real flat right here we can add one more right here and bring the top back over and then we can bring this one over and it'll curve back out this one here needs to come up we don't have to worry about getting that butt cheek we'll do the butt cheek separate let's go back into front view tuck this back in and then this right here ended up getting a little too big so probably have to pull this into about right there and it wouldn't hurt this got pulled back like that okay let's get this leg add a new cube subdivide it and let's put it up here we'll center it about right there and scale it up until we hit the sides let's rotate it just a bit and it's getting a little hard to see where this overlaps so I'm going to turn on random that way we've got different colors so if we pick these top verts and extrude them out and scale them down just a little bit and then we'll kind of just throw them on the inside here and that should hide the rest of it and then down here we'll take these We'll extrude to come down to about where the knee is. 
and we'll shape it about like that and that should be our leg or the top half of the of the leg add a new cube this will be our shin scale it up we'll rotate it again just a little bit and select the top half and we'll just pull it up and then this bottom half we'll pull it down a loop cut right here and we'll scale these pull this one up into the other leg other part of the leg and where this kind of comes in and then back down let's actually put this up here and then we'll extrude it to about right there and then we'll extrude again scale it down so now let's just get the outline of our mesh matched up with the outline of our reference and it's okay if you if you bend them up like that it, it's it's gonna be all right let's add another loop cut down at the bottom just to support this a little bit more so we can scale the ankle down oh and you know what I forgot to do on the side view on the other leg or on the upper half of the leg I didn't I didn't align it up so let's go do that now let's grab the bottom one's GY and pull it over pull the back to the front and that should be all right and let's get the calf GY so when you're in side view it's always going to be Y that's going to translate left and right and when you're in the front view pressing X will translate left and right GY Let's bring this out, that up, let's bring these up, and this one. Let's go back to, well, let's get this real quick. Let's go back to front view to see if we screwed it up any. Let's bring this back over, bring this over. Can we bring this in, bring this one out, or is it this one? Let's go to solid view see what we look like it's a pretty good calf okay so this kneecap needs to come over just a little bit so since these have the same modifier on them we can join them together and it won't mess anything up so control J and then let's add a mirror that way it fills in the other side of the legs okay let's go for the arms let's go and add a cube subdivide it and in edit mode we'll scale it down and instead of using the reference over here let's use these ones that I put to the right we'll go to the far far right scale this down and bring it up to the top we'll go into well, let's turn optimal display on scale it down and we'll start about right there we'll extrude this down to about the elbow scale it in and then we can see we can pull this one here and let's let's add a loop cut right in the middle we'll bring this one up Nope. And we'll just try to match it a little bit. Let's bring this up here. And let's put these verts right on the bins here. We'll select these and extrude them down. About right there. We'll put these right where these bump out. We can extrude them on out. Down to about right there. Now we can pull these on out where they need to be. These probably need to be up here. That way we can still get the shape. Now we can go down to the wrist. And we'll add another one down here just to kind of support the wrist a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so in the side view, we can take the arm that we just made and move it over here. Now we've just got to move these the sides to where they match up the outlines here. Just pulling and pushing in. We don't have to worry about being super, super accurate because like I said, we're going to be sculpting over top of this. This is just to try to make things a little bit easier on us. We might add another loop cut for this elbow here too. And I'm just hitting GY to move these. So we got a little bump out here that we can kind of put over here. Bring it forward. And then right in this elbow we might be able to use this vert. I doubt it. That's going to move too much geometry. So let's add a loop cut right here. And let's pull this out and then we'll pull this one in a solid view and take a look all right it looks good enough 
So now that that's finished, let's attach it to our body. Well, in, we're still in edit mode, so let's select all with just clicking A, and then G to move it over, R to rotate it, and then let's just kind of line it up to what we've got. It helps to be in x-ray mode though. Right there. Seems like it lines up. These seem like they bump out a little bit further than we wanted them to, so we can grab these. Let's pull them down a little bit. And then at the very edge here, we see we got a gap, so we can grab these inverts, hit E to extrude them, bring them over, and then we'll grab the bottom ones. Let's, let's get this vert right in the armpit there, and then we'll take this down, and then we can kind of make it match. Over here, we'll get on the shoulder and bring it up to there. We get out of x-ray mode and we hit 3, we'll see we're still we're not lined up with it yet. So hit A, G, Y, and bring it forward. Roundabouts to the middle. And now we need to look around to see if anything's sticking out. This one looks okay. Let's grab this one and pull it over into the body a little bit. And really it wouldn't hurt if we kind of squeezed it some. Let's grab our um, face select up here, or you can hit 3 on your, your number row. We'll click the top one and the bottom one. You can uh, select multiples if you hold down shift and then we'll scale it along the y-axis to kind of squish it up a little bit and that should be good enough. Let's uh, click on the arm and shift click the legs. We'll hit control J to join them which will put the mirror modifier that these had onto that one since they're all one piece now. Notice how they're all one color that means they're all all in the same object. Okay Let's get the feet. We'll add a, another cube. That's all we're doing is cubes. Control three. Let's go into edit mode. Let's get it down here close to the foot and we'll just move it in around about the spot where we need it to be. But we're gonna start on the side view. We'll put it down here. Yeah, about right there. Okay, let's go back to uh, the vertex select here and select the front ones. We'll extrude it forward and bring it down, bring these guys down too. Let's get the back here and extrude it out to the back. And we'll just fill in the ankle here. Let's bring this down. And let's select these two up here and hit extrude and that'll make the ankle go up. And then we're just gonna fill in the shape. Pull this back. Okay, so we need just a little bit right here so let's add a loop cut, that way we can kind of have that bump on the top of the foot. Okay, that's the side, let's go to the front. And it's a little too wide, let's select everything and scale it on the x-axis to bring it down. And then we can start taking the bottom half of it, scale it on the x-axis, bring it back up. Now let's bring the side here over until we meet the edge and then let's just get these four verts right here and we'll bring them over like that. The foot, let's actually, you see how it's not centered and it's kind of carved out that way? Let's actually move it to the right just a little bit, we'll eyeball it about right there. And don't worry about there's a gap underneath it right now. We'll um, we'll take care of that later. So let's take and join that to the foot as well. And that will give us a copy of the foot. Next we've got the neck. And we're actually not going to use a cube. We're going to use a cylinder. So add a cylinder. Don't subdivide it. We'll scale it down. GZ. Make sure that you use Z so we can keep it exactly in the middle. Scale it on down to about where it fills, right where it fills the neck in. Go to three so we can go to the side view. And let's turn x-ray back on. Let's move it back. We see it's a little bit too big. So let's scale it on the y-axis to thin it up. Okay, let's grab the top verts and then GZ and just shove them way up into the head. And the bottom verts, they're fine. They're gonna be okay. Now we wanna add a loop cut right here, right in the middle. Let's say right around in here right about there and then let's add another one right in here and with these still selected let's rotate it a bit and then let's bring it back down what we're looking for is uh, your verts to be hitting right here where it starts to turn and then you want your verts to hit over here where it starts to turn if they're not touching perfectly 
that's fine. You can always scale them up or you can just leave it the way it is. Okay, so let's select the top verts and let's just hit S to scale it. And then G, Y to move them forward just a little bit. And then the bottom verts, let's scale those. And what we're looking for is for them to get close to the edges to our reference. G, Y to bring them forward a little bit. And then let's check from the front view. You can see up here that it goes, we've got a curve right here. So we need to add a loop cut right around in there. And on the side, you can see that it, it fits it fine. So we don't want to scale on the Y. We only want to scale on the X this time. So scale X to bring this in. And we just want to worry about the verts getting right to the edge of the line. And with that selected, we'll hit Control and B, which is bevel. And when we pull our cursor away, you can see it's split it in half. If we roll up or down, we can see it, it, it'll bring more loops or less loops in, but just two or three should be fine. And you see how it smooths it out. Let's go to the side view and let's get this one. Control B, smoothed it out. And we'll do one up here too. Back to object mode. And that's what it looks like. Probably stand to have the top to be just a little bit wider. Let's scale it up just a little bit more. Okay. Now, let's work on the hands. Add a cube and scale it down. And throw it over here to the hand. Scale it down. So, with all of these verts selected, oh, by the way, if for some reason, you see how I'm orbiting around and it's not focusing in on the, on the cube or the sphere? You can hold down Alt and then middle click on whatever you want to focus on. And then now I'm orbiting around it. Or it's like, I don't want to orbit around this. I want to get on that foot. Middle click on the foot with Alt held. And now you're focused on the foot. But instead of um, just pulling this out, we're going to subdivide it first. So with all these verts selected, right click on it and hit subdivide. And that put a vert in between every single vert that we had. Okay. Now let's bring this around in the middle, scale it on the X, squish it to about the size of the palm, and then we'll scale it on Z to bring it up. Now let's pull these middle ones up a little bit, pull this one in, and just like usual we're trying to just get the, um, the shape of the outline. Let's pull this one in, and we'll pull this one out. We'll leave this in a little bit because that's actually the flesh of the thumb. Go to the side view, G, Y, and we'll bring it over to the palm. Now we can start grabbing the sides, and we don't want to move them up or down or along the x-axis at all because we've already set our position on the x-axis, so we're only worried about the y-axis. G, Y, bring it over, we'll bring these over, and then we'll bring these over. We can bring these back in and this can come down a little bit. So that should be pretty good. Now let's get out of there. Let's add another cube. Scale it down. Oh, this one's light blue. It's gonna be harder to see. We'll get it in here and let's subdivide it. Scale it on the X. We just wanna get it as thin as the finger is on that one. And we'll go ahead and start on the side view since this is where we can see most of our finger. Okay, scale it on the Y to get it down close enough. Rotate it in place. Now we can grab our top verts and bring them up. Let's bring them up pretty far into the finger. The bottom verts, bring it down to the tip of the finger. Now if we go back to the front view. So we can bring the front of this forward a little bit. And bring this closer to the tip. And you bring verts closer together while they're subdivided it makes the, the corner sharper. So we want this tip to be sharper and we want this to kind of be rounded off back here in the back. And then over here, we want the top of the finger to be thicker. So we hit GX, to bring the top of the finger up and then let's, let's center this one. And let's bring this over to the edge of our reference line. And then we may have to bring this one back a little bit. And we'll pull the top of this up that way, we've got plenty going into the mesh. And we'll kind of pull this out to thicken that up. So when we look at it like this, 
we see that we've got our finger creating a knuckle and we've also got what looks like we're starting to have the the palm pad that's right below the the fingers there so let's actually let's take and hit a select it shift d to duplicate it and we'll just place these fingers to match and we're not scaling them just yet the only one that we're really going to worry about scaling is probably going to be the pinky let's bring it over to the pinky let's take a look here yeah the pinky's a little bit too big so we will scale it down just a bit and we may have to all right we may have to that's my phone we may have to yeah we'll have to move these knuckles up just a little bit so we can do that they're really close so you might accidentally select the wrong thing so if we select the tip here and hold down control and press plus it's going to expand the selection so now that we've got it selected you can hit GZ and move it straight up same thing with this one grab your tip here control plus to expand the selection GZ let's bring this one up to might as well let's actually go into the hand again these probably need to be pulled up just a little bit they look a little harsh and then let's let's move them to the left just a little bit too okay over here at the palm we could probably take and move this one over here and then pull it in and take pull this one down kind of creates that little that little cup shape inside inside of your palm now let's make the thumb mesh cube subdivide edit three scale G scale her down okay so let's place it right in here and let's rotate it some let's scale it up pretty big rotate it out and uh, let's pull this up here we're wanting to match up with this and then down here we'll worry about this in a second let's select these verts and extrude them out maybe twice let's grab these and we'll scale them down and move them over this will be the tip of our thumb this will go here on the bump and then let's just line everything up so we need another loop cut here that way we can have this pull in pull out and have the thumb it really wouldn't hurt to have another loop cut right here that way we can show this pulling back out and I know there's a little gap here, but we can always pull that out when we're sculpting it. So back to the front view. Let's bring it over. We'll place it about right here. Now we can orbit around the side a little bit, and we're going to want to grab all of this and go back into front view, and then GX to start moving it over. And let's orbit back around. Let's get a few more. We'll go down to this joint, and then GX again. And then we'll get the very bottom of it right here and then GX like that let's pull this in just a little bit now let's take a look so there we've got a hand if we if you want to we can um, we can take these two verts and we can just pull them over some more that way you could get that big that big old fleshy spot there so with that done let's join all of this together control J go into front view edit mode and let's bring it up and let's attach it to the, well, let's place it in, in the hand position. X-ray mode, about right there. I press 7 to go into top view. And then GY, place it right where it needs to be. This thumb seems like we need to, a little stubby, bring it out a little bit. Grab these, bring them out, and scale them down a little bit. There we go. So yeah, it looks like a thumb. You can actually probably grab this one and bring it up a little bit more into it. Like I said though, this is just, we don't really need to be so stickler. We're just blocking out. It's <laughs> nowhere near close. So we can take this and mirror it. We don't want to join it to anything just yet because we're going to have to sculpt this separately. Okay, we've got the ears. We'll add a cube. Subdivide it, bring it into the edit mode, scale her down, bring it up, and in side view, let's add a loop cut, 
and let's scale it down on the Y axis. There's good. And let's select this middle loop and GG to move it forward. So go into the front view and let's go into our X-ray mode. Scale all the verts down and let's get it close to over here. And we'll add one more loop cut up the side here. And we'll just try to get this shaped to the shape of the ear and let it go inside the head. Something like that. Something like that. Now we can take these outside edges here, scale them down just a little bit, and then bring them forward. Well, let's rotate it on the Z axis. RZ, bring the back forward, or bring the top forward, and then let's bring it in a little bit. Okay, so let's select these front faces, press I to inset, and bring it in a little bit. Press I again to inset, bring it in just a little bit and then GY, pull it back into the ear, and this will be our ear cavity. Now in x-ray mode, let's grab, let's get the vert selections, and we'll grab these verts, and let's bring them down, and uh, we'll rotate them a little bit, kind of bring them out. Just mess around with the verts here to try to get the shape that we want. It would probably help if we had it out here in the open. Okay, that's good enough. So it looks like the shape of this ear is okay, but it's actually not wide enough because what we're seeing in the reference is actually an angled view of it. If you look through, you can see it right here. It's actually about that long, still at an angle. So what we can do is bring it back over where we had it and scale it along the X axis and then rotate it along the Z axis. Let's go into the side view we actually rotated it the wrong way. Let's go back this way. So we're pretty close. Let's look at it from back here. Pull it in a little bit. Let's grab a bunch of these and just kind of pull it down. Pull her out. That should work out. Now I realize it looks like it's coming out of the jaw. It's in kind of a weird spot. So let's kind of move it back some. About right there is where we need it. That's a little better. Close enough. And we're going to keep this its own object too, so let's add a mirror modifier. And that's pretty well the block out. Oh, that's not pretty well the block out. I almost forgot about the butt and the boobs. Let's add a cube. Subdivide it. Edit mode. Scale it down. Let's go into side view gonna get the shape of the butt right there so let's get this pretty close let's actually rotate this about like that and we'll grab these verts and we'll pull it straight up and we'll grab this one pull it down this one pull it out like that now let's go into front view press 9 to do the reverse of it and we'll pull it over like this so front view let's actually Grab these side, this side, and we'll go GX and move it over. See how overlapping that. This bottom part is just too, too low. So that should be a little bit better. Let's take a look from the back. That's pretty good. Let's bring this one out just a little bit. Bring it on up. And let's take these out to the side a little bit more. We'll bring this in. And let's join it to the body. Control J. And now I know this looks weird right here. We'll take care of that here in a second. And for the boobs, it's very similar. Add a cube. Subdivide it. Let's scale it down. And let's preemptively go ahead and add a mirror modifier. And we'll go into side view. Bring it up about right to here. And let's look in the front. We'll bring it over about to there. Scale them up just a little bit, about right there. We'll grab this vert and pull it up. Grab this one and pull it down. We'll pull this one down a little bit. About like that. Okay, and then we'll grab these top verts here, GX to move them closer to the center. And we'll grab these four and move them further out. And we'll grab these two and move these closer in. 
could probably scale these down in the top and move them over. Something like that. That should be close enough. We can take care of the rest in sculpt mode. Okay, so let's uh, let's get this butt fixed real quick. Let's click on this one and let's apply subdivision. And then we'll go into sculpt mode. And in our tools here, we'll grab the inflate brush. And while holding control, we'll start clicking. And that will start deflating the mesh. And as it goes into the other mesh, we'll be able to see our bodacious butt cheeks. That should be enough. And that's it for the block out. In the next video, we'll join all these pieces together and we'll actually start sculpting on the body. So I'll see you in the next video.